Hey, you want a real good reason to go and watch The Queen's Corgi? Donald Trump is in this movie, and he's represented just about as well as you can imagine. That's totally gonna keep this movie timeless, isn't it? Don't take this as a political video, guys. I have nothing else to say about Trump other than he's voiced by the current Shadow the Hedgehog guy. Anyway, about the movie. And I didn't even realize it had a theatrical release in some countries including mine. Instead, I watched the movie online, with no excitement and yeah, that sounds just about right. The Queen's Corgi isn't the worst movie to come out of the year, I mean this has nothing on Arctic Dogs and the Playmobil movie, but I continue to ask how this even got a theatrical release in the first place. The story centers on one of Queen Elizabeth's corgis named Rex. He's enjoying high pride at the palace alongside the other corgis that live there. But one day, the big man himself shows up with his own corgi and they want to make them mate for some sort of relationship growth? I can't remember. Anyway, he freaks out, runs away, and is pushed off a bridge by one of the other corgis known as Charlie. Oh, another asshole with that name. Rex is taken to a dog pound and meets these other dogs that aren't quite as wealthy as him, and I think you guys get the picture. But okay, enough with the story for now. Can I just talk about how fucking weird this movie is? I mean, not just how they interpret Queen Elizabeth and Trump, but Trump's corgi isn't just in love with Rex, she's portrayed as a rapist, and the movie plays it as a joke in a movie meant for kids. Oh, and that's not the end of it. There's plenty of moments in the movie with really out of place romantic gestures for a bunch of dogs. There's a fighting ring in this movie. They really aren't trying to hide some of the sick realities of the world. And that dog Charlie is a goddamn psychopath. Like, he doesn't just want to kill Rex by drowning him in ice. When he gets piled, he sets the pile on fire to let him die. I'm not gonna lie, with all the weird and out of place elements this movie had, I was actually interested in seeing where it would go, but I knew that would be a mistake. The actual plot itself is nothing I haven't seen before. Dog valuing himself more than others? Seen it. Psychopathic brother wanting to kill him? Seen it. Rich dog thrown into an uncomfortable environment and learning to respect others? Seen it. It's ironic how this movie has a vaguely similar story to Secret Life of Pets and it feels like a ripoff ripping off a ripoff. Is it as bad as Secret Life of Pets? Well, yeah, it is. Actually, it's even worse. I mean, that doesn't change the fact that Life of Pets is still a bad and boring mess, but this movie had a lot of parts that feel really out of place for a kid's movie. I mean, have I not made myself clear with the rapist dog? The fact that a movie is portraying rapists like that as a joke feels very uncomfortable and dirty. When Rex is thrown into the river and drowning to death, it's drawn out and very unnerving. And to seal the deal, there's a bully dog known as Tyson who constantly beats the the shit out of Rex and says things like, I'll deal with her later, about his girlfriend. Did a children's movie just imply domestic abuse? I'm all for an animated movie cramming in some adult jokes, but Jesus Christ, be more subtle about that and don't mock real life scenarios. That's kind of disgusting. Unfortunately, the characters aren't much better. Rex is not likable in the slightest. He's always claiming he is the Queen's top dog, being too posh and whines like a baby a lot of the time. I already mentioned Charlie and how fucked in the head he is, but the Tyson dog isn't much better. Taking out that distracting, abusive relationship insinuation, he's just a standard bully character, only there to make things worse for the protagonist and having no personality or redeeming qualities at all. The characters are about as bland and generic as you can get. They're really ticking off a checklist for an animated movie, aren't they? The animation is the only redeeming aspect. Well, kind of. It's not good. The characters look a little blocky in their designs, especially the dogs, but I like the human animation, particularly on Prince Philip and Donald Trump. It's got nice backgrounds, especially in Buckingham Palace, and the lighting is alright. It's not a terrible looking movie, but nowhere near as atrocious as Norm of the North 2 or Arctic Dogs. And that's about all I can say about this movie. You can get an idea if this movie is for you or not, but if you have kids, I wouldn't suggest showing them to this at all. Especially with how it pokes fun at rapists and abusive relationships. I feel like if I was a kid watching this, I'd probably feel a little freaked out myself. Kids aren't stupid, you know, they will notice when something seems off. The Queen's Corgi certainly isn't the worst animated movie of 2019, but it's something that ultimately didn't need to exist or probably would have been better off just released straight to DVD. Never thought I'd experience another Duck Duck Goose type movie, let alone one that's actually worse than that movie.